Welcome to a special edition of the Comics Bound podcast. I am Stephanie Cook and I am joined by Lan Pitts. Happy Tuesday. And we're here to discuss uh, Conventions 101. Um, once a month, Lan and I are planning on doing a special edition podcast like this where basically we break down um, one aspect of the comics world that maybe you want a little bit more information on. So with convention season having kicked off um, recently, we thought that one of the first topics that we should cover would be conventions. You know, that that just makes sense, right, Lan? I think so. I mean, you and I have done our travels, and uh, we've gone to dozens and dozens at this point, I feel like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, we, have, we have some um, tips and tricks and just general information that could maybe help you if you maybe only casually go to conventions, if you're considering going to your first convention, or just maybe want to know more about conventions because a friend of yours is super into it and you want to be informed. Um, So we're going to be covering cool things like how to get commissions, etiquette, cosplay, uh, the best shows you can attend, in our opinions, um, crowd control, uh, survival kits, panels, planning, um, all that good stuff. So if that sounds like something you are interested in learning more about, please continue to tune in. If not, we have other cool shows where we just discuss comics and um, other nerdy stuff that we happen to like, like wrestling. Although that's more lamb. <laughs> um, we'll convert you yet. I, I will learn the ways of the wrestling. Um, so... I think for the kind of kickoff of this, um, the, one of the best places to kind of start is how to plan going to a convention. Usually a convention, a good convention will have uh, a website. That website will list what kind of show they're planning on having. If it's like more of a comics based show, if there's lots of wrestlers there, cause that's a thing, right? It, it is a thing. It yes. Is, it, it is. is uh... Some people do do the con circuit, yes. I feel like it's a very wizard world thing. but Sometimes, sometimes, uh, yeah, that, that is the case. Uh, every now and then they do like either a local show or just random appearances if they just happen to be yeah. in anyway, town yeah. for the night performing anyway. So they'll stop on by. And some of them happen to be really big comic book fans. Um Yes. But yeah, so there's, you know, also celebrities from your favorite TV shows, movies, there's video game voice actors, uh, developers, all kinds of really cool people that will make appearances at your local convention. Um, so I find that the best way to do that is to find your convention that you're planning on attending and to follow their website or follow their social medias because they tend to be really proud of the people that they get and the cool things that they're planning, um, and they will post about them a lot, like a good social media person should. Um, in terms of, you know, planning more than that, um, there's always panels and events and cool things that happen at shows, too. Also, uh, those are things that they post on their website. Um, I think in most cases, the panels and programming don't really get announced until like a week or two before the show, right? Right. right. They kind of keep those really um, hush-hush until everything's kind of settled down, like cancellations happen, and they just want to make sure that the air is all cleared before they go ahead and be like, this is a thing that's happening. And then they then have to say, this is a thing that's not happening. Um, so what, what are some examples of panels that you've attended in the past, Lan? Panels or conventions? Panels, like some programming, maybe not just panels, but things that you can kind of plan for, um, when, you know, deciding you're going to go to a convention. And I know in your case, you often work at them, but you know, yeah. let's say hypothetically you're going to one for fun. What are some things that you are on the lookout for personally? Uh, usually because of my Cartoon Network and Adult Swim connections, I probably hit up Robot Chicken or Venture Brothers. It's always a good time. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Venture Brothers and 
what those guys do at uh, Robot Chicken anyway. So those are always fun for me personally. Uh, the bigger things like what Marvel and DC has for announcing don't really don't really work for me. That uh, don't impress you much. <laughs> it just it just seems like too massive, and I'd rather do creator spotlight panels if that's the case. Uh, anytime that uh, Jim Starenko does something, especially if he has a panel, Uncle like, Jim, Uncle Jim just. Telling stories about just being, you know, the weirdest, coolest person who ever lived. It's always good stuff. Surprisingly, Neil Adams has some really good stories. And I know a lot of people are sort of find him abrasive a lot of the times. But he has some really cool stories from DC back in the 70s when like it was really getting its footing in. I feel like you just don't want to ask him about like tectonic plates or oh, like, absolutely not. No, 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 anything no. like that. We're pretty no, no, no. serious about this, by the way. Like he's been <laughs> known to go on some. Which I like, didn't realize until like a few years ago that he's really big into the global expansion theory, and I'm just. I mean, it's all. I mean, it's you know, it's not it's not harming anybody in the long run, but. If Yikes. you bring it up, you will like literally wind up in a four hour conversation with Neil <laughs> Adams. I'm not exaggerating. So. Yeah, any anytime. I mean, I feel like anytime Stan Lee has a good spotlight, it's always fun. Although I really wish people would stop asking the same questions to him because it's the same answers. Yeah, like he's gotten to a rhythm of those answers. Who's your favorite supervillain, Doctor Doom? Why? Because diplomatic immunity is a really cool superpower. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. That's what he answers every time somebody has this question. Uh, which is fine because it's a really cool answer, and obviously, uh, anytime, uh, anytime our you know our friend Ted has a panel, uh, I've moderated a few of his panels in the past, and we always seem to have a really good time. Uh, anything that uh, Babs, Brendan, Cameron like to do, it's they're a really good duo. I moderated uh, Brendan and Babs' panel at Dragon Con last year. That was fun. They're the dream team. I love them. <laughs> uh, anytime people want to bring up wrestling. Like wrestling and <laughs> comics, I'm always going to be there. I'm shocked. Uh, you are shocked and appalled. I am most appalled <laughs> and shocked. <laughs> uh, anytime there's like, you know, you get to see somebody drawing. Like, um, anytime you get to see like Brian Stillfreeze draw, Adam Hughes draw, anybody like that that's really cool just to, just to lay down some stuff on paper is really cool to see. So, yeah, that's the usual stuff I hit up. Uh, I did moderate a comics and journalism, uh, journalism and comics panel one time with uh, Heidi McDonald. That was really weird because I didn't think, like, that would be a really interesting panel because it's not like you can really say, well, what's, what's the pros and cons of it? I'm like, the pros. You get to work in comics. The cons. You get to work in comics. Yes. So, <laughs> um, and the personalities and egos that come with it and you know we we both know who have you know those sort of egos and everything so it's yeah th those are the type of panels i usually kind of go to if not i'm just like wandering around and people talking so yeah i i'm usually the same sort of thing like i typically go to conventions more to see um the artists and like creators that are in um, Artist Alley or um, that have been invited as guests. But lately I've been gravitating towards panels to kind of fill the day because like, I find myself kind of overwhelmed um, by the crowds and that kind of ties into something we, we want to talk about. But um, Toronto now has like I think four or five big shows a year and while there's only really two of them that are like you know, I think worldwide known, uh, I, I still tend to make my way to the other ones just because, you know, my people are there. Um, and the last time I was at them, I, I wound up doing something that I don't typically do at all. And I went to one of the like TV show spotlight panels for, um, the TV show Killjoys. Um, I spoiled the entire show for myself cause I'd only watched half of the first season. Um, but it was really, really fun. I didn't expect to enjoy spotlight panels like that on TV shows as much as I did. I really thought that it was going to suffer from what you were saying with Stan Lee with 
like fans asking really yeah. mundane questions because having worked in comics, I've seen those questions asked a thousand times to, you know, certain creators. And I was really genuinely impressed by the caliber of the questions that were uh, brought up and addressed. And the whole cast was just had amazing things to say. And I was just blown away that I hadn't taken the time to do something like this before. And that being said, um, for those of you who do want to attend celebrity panels and TV show panels and movie panels, I wouldn't typically risk doing something like this at a bigger show because you tend to wind up in really big lineups and you wind up more or less in those lineups risking not actually getting a seat. Um, so I, I, I don't tend to gravitate towards that stuff, but this show was a smaller one and it wasn't as populated. So I knew I would basically everyone had already been seated in a few minutes before the panel. I peeked in and there was seats for me. So I just like squatted and hung out. Um, but typically, um, movies and TV shows, anything kind of big media, um, those panels are going to fill up very, very, very fast, um, typically. So um, that's that's just like a sidebar to if you're planning on attending panels. Comic panels tend to get really packed as well, but it sort of just depends on what the panel is and who's on it. Right. Um, but yeah, crowds. Um, as I was mentioning, like the panels are a good way to kind of sit down and get away from that overwhelming claustrophobic feeling that you can sometimes get in busier shows. There's a lot packed into the exhibitor aisles and artist alley aisles. And a lot of times it can be extremely claustrophobic, even if you're not a claustrophobic person. Um, it's, it's like a meat ocean. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds delicious. I mean, if you're thinking it's like bacon, but this isn't bacon. This is like a group of people who may or may not. I mean, most people I think are pretty courteous about hygiene for the most part. But every now and again, it's not. And like as much as I don't like saying that and kind of being like, you know, it's it's just inevitable. If you get enough people in a room together, there's going to be certain people that don't have the same, you know. Hygiene priorities. And so you you wind up kind of just feeling very, you know, lots of people around you. And, oh, my God, how do I escape? Not so fresh. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're really good ways. Like, a lot of cons are starting to do, like, quiet rooms and um, spaces where you can kind of just chill out. Um, and, again, panels. Is there any places – I mean – I mean, you and I have had press rooms and other kind of benefits um, that most people wouldn't have access to. But what are some other places that you find are great to get away and decompress? Well, it depends on the venue. Uh, I'm trying to think of something because I mainly hit, I don't know, it all depends. Because Heroes Con, there's, there's places outside the convention center where people can sit. There's... Uh, places all around. There's the food court. There's just, yeah, I don't know. I love Heroes and how it's laid out. So, I mean, there's various places. For a place like New York, that might be a little more... Daunting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is the, you know, the VIP and the press rooms and everything like that. But aside from, for people like that, for people who don't have that, I I don't know. That just seems so intimidating to me. Uh, I was intimidated... Uh, after her, I hadn't been in a few years, and it, it had already emerged with New York Anime Festival, I, I want to say, and how they completely laid it out. Because now, instead of it being in one place, you have the main floor, and then you have Artist Alley, which is all the way in Javits North. So it's completely spread out, and I don't know if there's any place like that. Uh, for Dragon Con, there's numerous places because it's like four hotels. And if you want to get away from the crowd from, like, the Marriott, there's the Hilton. I mean, the Hyatt was recently revamped a couple years ago. So there's 
places for that. Awesome Con, uh, I'm still getting used to that one. That's the DC. That's the DC Con that I'm going to be heading to in a few weeks. Uh, I've only done it last year, and I did it for a day. So I want to do the whole weekend experience this time and get back to you. There's Baltimore Comic Con, which is really nice. So I, I feel like there's a lot of places uh, in around the convention center where you could just chill if you need be, but nothing really like specified as like a nap room, which would just be great. There, there are know. some, like there there are a few cons that do stuff like that, but you kind of just need to be um, aware in your planning stage of things. Like <laughs> a lot of them will advertise, you know, what kind of rooms are available to people who kind of need the extra space um, and sort of amenities and stuff like that. So um, if that's something you foresee potentially wanting, definitely tweet at them or send them a message or check on their website and see if they're planning on having anything like that is my personal advice. Yeah. Um, but let's see. Okay. So speaking of surviving and, you know, knowing in advance what you kind of need in terms of space, what are some things that you foresee needing to bring to a show? I mean, I feel like bottled water is a good thing. Well, here's, here's my standard. Here's my standard because especially, uh, with low blood sugar that I get pretty, pretty heinously and everything like that. So what I usually pack are, um, Gatorade, lots of Gatorade, and if that gets kind of daunting, uh, get the powdered Gatorade, like the little packs, and you can just use your bottled water and just go from there. Uh, then you have like the snacks, granola bars really help, Cliff bars really help, stuff with, like protein, anything like that's really good. I mean, I, I just pack like a bunch of snacks <laughs> just throughout the uh, like for the for the whole weekend when I'm out and about. M and M's like peanut M and M's are great. I don't really do trail mix because I hate raisins. So anything that has like a sugar and salt kind of factor to it, I'm all about that. Chocolate covered pretzels, not really because it melts. Uh, M&M's kind of stay intact, especially if it's something like inside like a little self-contained bag like that. Uh, So lots of protein. Uh, Sadly, no fruits or cheeses or anything like that because it goes bad like pretty easily. But I I keep to usually like granola bars or something with... um, or like Cliff that you can easily just take. And Cliff isn't the most delicious thing, but it, it really gets the job done if you need that last bit of protein and energy boost. And if you're a coffee drinker, make sure that you come with a coffee. Because like once you get there, those lineups are killer. Yeah, yeah. I don't do coffee, but for people who really just need that coffee, uh, it's there's no like vending machines you have to end up hitting up like a vendor or anything like that. And it gets pricey after that. Um, and then outside of food, because Lan definitely covered all of that, like literally all of it. Um, uh, I would definitely recommend, and this sounds like very germaphobe of me, but like, I swear I was never like this until I started going to conventions. Bring hand sanitizer. Oh yeah, most definitely. Hand sanitizer is your BFF at conventions. Um, emergency. Yes. Um, Emergency, start your day with emergency. Yeah. So you can avoid con crud because you're at like bigger shows. You're going to be around people like numbering somewhere between 20,000 to like, in some cases, like 80,000 people, you know, like. New York was 145,000. Now that may not have been all at the same time, but at times it definitely felt like it. Exactly. So, you know, the chances are somebody may have a cold or something. You want to fight that con crud so you can get back to work after the show. Um, so make sure you have like hand sanitizer, uh, napkins, like, or Kleenex, uh, what Lan said, emergency. Um, let's see. Oh, I always bring, I say I always bring, but I almost always forget and then buy. So in theory, I would bring a plastic sleeve or a poster tube so that you can buy oh. prints. Uh, and commissions and not get them schmucked up. Well, I mean, I just bring my portfolios. Okay, or that. Or yeah. that. Um, and you don't want to carry around too much stuff, but if you have, like, a nice backpack, bring a couple of your 
favorite comics that maybe you want to have signed or maybe a sketchbook. Um, and you can get something drawn for you or commissioned, which brings me, look at this segue, um, to our next portion of things, which is getting commissions done, which is a huge thing to do at uh, Comic Con. Um, Lan and I both have sketchbooks, um, and I both we both have themed sketchbooks, which is not something that you have to do. You can just have a sketchbook and be like, on one page, draw me a cat. On the next page, be like, draw me Luke Skywalker. On the next page, Poison Ivy. You can do whatever you want, really. But I think it's fun for us um, to have themes. I really do have an entire sketchbook of creators drawing cats. You do? I do. And Lan has a themed sketchbook that is pretty well known as well. Well, I have several, but I think what you're talking about is this is the Zatanna theme sketchbook yeah. that I started at Heroes Con 2010. That is the one I'm talking about. Yeah, the first piece is Guy Davis. Um, no big deal. No big deal. So, yeah, but I have other books I just kind of... I mean, it's my vice. I'm not even going to front anything about that. That is, that is my straight-up vice. Uh, I have a horror sketchbook, a Disney villain sketchbook, Zatanna sketchbook, um, 80s animation sketchbook and yeah and uh, Venture Brothers so it, it varies it varies around my I've, I've debated on starting a new one this year but I'm going to I'm going to reel myself back in a second and just try to concentrate on what I have going on right now but I think the next one will definitely be a wrestling theme sketchbook ooh I like it so I mean I like it in theory, knowing in future, you will convince me to like wrestling. Um, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, again, Lan and I ha- happen to have worked with, like, a lot of creators, so I feel like we, like, we'll just kind of premeditate who we're going to see and, like, be like, oh, yeah. oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. But, again, kind of tying this back into the planning stage... Um, if you're somebody who's going to want a commission from somebody, um, a really good thing to do is make a list of the artists that are like your top, like say 10 to get a sketch from. Um, if they're really big artists, there's a good chance that their like commissions may fill up very quickly. So planning in advance, um, I would check their websites and their Twitter feeds and Facebooks to see if maybe they're taking advanced commissions. Um, They tend to charge the same amount for pre-commission sketches, but they're going to have more time um, to do it at home. And like, for instance, if you see some of Kevin uh, Wada's um, sketches that he does at shows versus his pre-commissions, like they're, so so good i mean both of them are good don't get me wrong but like you know when they're at home knowing that they have x amount of time to do x amount of things leading up to the show it tends to be a little less hectic for them right Uh, both both of my water pieces were done in his studio and both are incredible yes and i mean not all artists do pre-commissions but it's definitely a good idea to check because, again, it's a numbers game. Sometimes you're going to show up at a convention being like, I want to get a commission from uh, Rob Liefeld. That's just, that's not a thing. But, like, you know, just in case. It is a thing. I know. I've never been into a convention. That's the weird thing. People shit on Rob. I know, I know. They My love him. He always last, packed. He, he had, like... <laughs> people around the convention center waiting for him. So like, I'm just being a jerk. But anyways, if you like Rob Liefeld, just ignore me. I'm being, I'm being petty. Um, but for instance, if Rob by chance was taking commissions, there's a really good chance. Almost everybody's going to immediately go to his booth. So there's artists like Tony Moore, who was originally on the walking dead, who basically do a lottery. They take a bunch of names in like the first hour or so and like they draw like 10 names um from that pile and whoever um 
gets drawn, you know, pays part up front and then pays the rest like on delivery sort of thing. But that way they avoid people who are just buying sketches to sell later on eBay or something. They give a better chance to people who um, genuinely want the sketches. Uh, But there's a lot of different systems in place. So do a little bit of research if that's your game. Sketches can start like at a really, really low reasonable price for certain creators that you definitely know and love, but they can also get very, very pricey. So again, do your research. And my biggest piece of advice here also, set a budget. Like Set that budget. (laughs) No, really. Take out a certain amount of money that you are willing to part with at a convention and like leave your debit card or credit card at home otherwise because you will spend like crazy otherwise yes so what i recommend for that situation is get a paypal debit card or paypal (laughs) credit card have your money in your paypal account or move it from over from your bank account or whatever and just use that for the side don't worry like because that's already set there there's nothing to worry about or any sort of Anything like that, but that's that's what I recommend doing there. That's a good that's a good idea. I like it. Um, that's, helped, that's helped me in the past. <laughs> that's I, that's smart. I don't know if we have PayPal credit cards in Canada, but I'm gonna look that up. Um, let's see. Next thing, I, I feel like we're we're going through very strategically here, but um, etiquette. Um, I feel like etiquette is a pretty, you know, you would think that a lot of stuff is common sense, but in some cases it's really, really not. Um, so why don't I say a point, you say a point, we'll go back and forth for a couple minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one ties into cosplay and stuff, but, um, don't take unsolicited photos of people. And I mean, there, there's definitely exceptions where if like there's a, big group of cosplayers and people are all kind of gathered around taking photos of those cosplayers, definitely join in. But if those cosplayers are wearing a costume that is, you know, a little bit more on the um, skin side of things, just don't, don't take upskirt shots. Don't take photos of their butt. Don't take photos of their boobs. Don't be gross. Take photos that you would take of someone else's daughter. Like Don't be a creep. Yeah. So that is like my etiquette 101. Don't be a creep. Don't make other people uncomfortable. Um, show the same respect that you would want uh, shown to you. Lan, what's an etiquette tip from you? Bathe. Yes. <laughs> I know, again, these sound very cruel, maybe a bit, but... Really. Um, Take care of yourself because, and make sure you are not offensive in any sort of way. And it, and it, and I know things get hectic and things get busy and you end up drinking way more than you should at, at the West End bar or <laughs> wherever. We've all been there. We have. But just, you know, in the morning or before you go to bed, bathe. Yep. Yep. Put on People- deodorant. <laughs> People will thank you. Maybe not to your face, but they will thank you by being actually nice to you. I agree. Um, my One of my biggest things is if you want to look at a booth, go to the booth. Do not stand in the aisle looking at the booth because you are scared to talk to the person. They are there to sell you goods, yes, but they are very nice in almost all circumstances and want to sell you things. And they're not going to bother you and harass you. Go to the booth. Do not stand in the aisle and block others. I get so frustrated trying to get past people because they're just stopped in the aisle to kind of timid to go up and look at the things that they want to clearly look at. Um, they, they're selling their wares. They're cool things. Don't be afraid to let them know that you think they're cool. Um, I say this as somebody who like 
says the weirdest things when booth people talk to them. So like deliberately, I'm like, oh God, please don't talk to me. But so I, I mean, I really get it, but still, if you're going to look at the booth, go to the booth. Land. I feel like etiquette in art collecting is sort of um, a good thing to have to, especially for someone who doesn't know. I mean, I've had to help friends start sketchbooks because it, it's a daunting process. I feel, especially now where some artists are becoming more and more like celebrity based and everything like that, they're becoming more in demand. So it can be intimidating to ask them. But if I always start the question, you know, if you just happen to want to meet somebody like an artist you like and you want to know, just ask like, Hey, are you, are you taking commissions or sketch lists or anything like that? And usually like they fill up or like, well, I, I'm filled up for the day, but come back tomorrow. Or they'll maybe do like a quick one for like, you know, 20 bucks or so just to pass the time. So I, I, I feel like that's, that's a that's the thing to really concentrate about, especially for people who want to get into the art uh, collecting hobby. But I've seen people like walk up to artists, and this is no hyperbole situation. This literally happened at I want to say MegaCon 2009 when I just saw a person go up to two artist friends of mine who were already drawing for like you know a group of kids. And they just put down money and was like, hey, can you draw me as Captain America? And they just go, yeah, after these people are done. So I, I, I feel, I, I know that's kind of like an anomaly, but I, I feel like that's still something that people should work on and not be complete buts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of another one. I was listening intently to yours and not Take playing. Take care of yourself, too. I mean, that's not an <laughs> etiquette thing, but that is, like, if you haven't eaten, eat. If you haven't, like, hydrated, please hydrate. Mm-hmm. Um, this is sort of, like, the same sort of point, I guess, but I'm going to sum it up into one. Don't congregate in the aisles. Um, if you have friends that you've run into, find a place where you guys can keep walking and go off to the side and talk. People are trying to get from point A to point B. It is very claustrophobic for a lot of people. Um, keep in mind, we're a very anxious and introverted lot, uh, generally speaking. And, you know, sticking us in a non-moving crowd is really awful. So have a lot of consideration for the people around you by keeping the, like, line that you're in moving. Um, find your friends go off to the side. That's the same sort of thing for cosplay. Take photos of cosplayers, again, in a courteous fashion, but do that in a place that isn't blocking the aisles. Um, Or at least try your best to, you know, get out of the way and take your photo and do it quickly. None of this, let's get the best shot. If you're in somebody's way, make sure that you're doing it quickly and efficiently. Um, Yeah. I feel like that's most of the things I have. <laughs> I feel like another thing, too, is a little bit of encouragement. It's okay to be starstruck by some people. Yes. I, I mean, I was, my friend George would tell you, I was almost just lost for words when I met Steranko for the first time uh, years and years ago. That was kind of just crazy cool. But it was sort of like, I don't know what to say to you. Bye. So, I mean. I, Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you whatever you think your worst thing what your worst possible scenario is they've seen worse. Oh, uh, I literally I've lunged. Story? I've lunged out of conversations. I've like moonwalked out of conversations. I'm not even lying. Tweet at Mark Lamming and ask him if I've moonwalked out of conversations with him. Like <laughs> I get so weird and then I don't know the natural end to my conversation and I literally just like moonwalk away is it a good moonwalk you'd have to ask mark laming Laming. (laughs) sorry mark i'm messing up your last name forgive me (laughs) um but like i've lunged out of conversations i've done weird captain morgan poses the first time i met kate leth i was like hi i'm hello cookie we're friends and she kind of looked at me really weirdly and i freaked out and like literally ran away and i didn't Uh talk to her for like ever afterwards and then like i was like i'm so sorry i did that weird thing like 
I've done so many weird things and they don't care as long as you're not, you know, being offensive or rude or anything. They know that we're an awkward people. They get it. Um, I can laugh about it later because I'm totally that person. Um, but yeah, like they've seen worse <laughs> and most of them have because of me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I feel like I've also unintentionally said offensive things, but you know, that's fine. It's fine. I mean, not offensive, offensive things. Like, intentionally? No, unintentionally. Like not offensive things. Like I just unintentionally like say things that I'm like, why did I say that? Um, I'm, I'm just gonna stick my foot in my mouth. The first time I met Adam Hughes was like was my first convention ever. And I was looking through his portfolio, and this was probably like maybe 2008, 2009, maybe. Okay. Uh, maybe earlier than that, maybe like 2007. Anyways, irrelevant. Um, I was looking through the portfolio of his stuff, and he was like, uh, hi, like I do the Catwoman covers. And I was like so offended, and I was like, I know! Like, <laughs> I like yelled at him. Like, <laughs> I've, I was like, I didn't mean it like that. Like, I love Adam, though. He, I know, me too. Um, and he always seems like a curmudgeon at his table, and he kind of is a bit. But when you see him on panels and stuff, like, he's... Well, that's how he is. He, yeah. he, he I mean, that's why he has Allison. But, I mean, I feel... I don't know. He opens up better when it's just... He. You will never see a funnier person on a panel than Adam Hughes. I swear to God. He ask is him. You should ask on him. Ball. When he met... The first time he met Dave Stevens... Okay, okay, okay. Talking about embarrassing moments, if we're talking about embarrassing moments, he has a funny story about meeting Dave Stevens for the first time. Okay. We, I, that, see, that's a talking point somebody can bring up. Um, <laughs> I feel like we're running, starting to get towards the uh, longer side of this um, show that we wanted to do. So I think we're going to start kind of wrapping some things up. Um I, I wanted to cover things like cosplay, but like I don't think Lan or I, either of us cosplay. So I think maybe on I a, used to. Yeah. Yeah, I used to. I'll, I'll, well, I'll, we can. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm sending you a picture right now. I'll show you my old costumes. Okay. Yeah. I think I think we're gonna cover a cosplay 101 a bit later. Like that'll be something we do a little bit more in depth for one of these special edition shows. Um, uh, so let's, let's end this, um, by naming a couple of our favorite shows, um, that we think people should hit up. Um, want to go back and forth again? Let's, let's do this. What's, yeah. what's one of your favorite shows? Me first? Yep. Uh, Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina, run by Shelton Drum and Rico Renzi and, uh, slew of other people is just a big old family reunion and I can't wait to go back. I 100% agree with this. I love Heroes Con. Um, my favorite my in my heart of hearts is Emerald City Comic Con. Um, it was my first convention outside of Canada. Uh, it was formerly run by uh, the Demonakis Brothers. Uh, it's now one of the Reed Pop Expo shows. Uh, but still equally amazing and awesome and seattle is a fantastic city so um if you ever get a chance to go out that way for a show you definitely should land um i I mean i'm an atlanta guy so and i know it's gotten a lot of flack but i love dragon con it's it's not it's not really a comic convention it's not a it's it's a i don't know it's it's a party (laughs) like for for everyone that like really loves san diego and like, oh, that's like nerd prom. I'm like, I don't know. We have like burlesque shows and fun stuff like that. And it's it's set up in a hotel, so it doesn't really shut down. And I mean, I've gone to Klingon after parties at like three in the morning, and it's just been great. I yeah. I mean, I haven't done Dragon Con yet, but <laughs> I, I definitely am considering that in the future. Um, I, I'm going home hometown here as well. I'm going cool. to talk about TCAF. Yeah. On this weekend. Um, so TCAF is probably the most European show that you will find in North America. Um, <laughs> I know that sounds very bizarre, but like um, I, I've been to a few shows in Europe as well. And this one is very, very 
uh, like that sort of vibe. It's very relaxed. It's very chill. Um, over the last few years, it's gotten a bit more hectic, but it takes place in the Toronto Reference Library um, amongst all of the books and things. Uh, it's a free show. So anybody who wants to discover comics and kind of have the door open for them, this is a really amazing environment to do that. Um, again, there's like no strings attached to this at all because you don't have to pay for admission. You just get to wander around and meet really cool artists uh, doing really cool projects. Um, admittedly, a lot of these projects are a bit more small press. Um, but, you know, for instance, Brian K. Vaughn is here this year. Um, and there are definitely people you will recognize from bigger titles if that's your only experience with comics. Otherwise, there's a lot of awesome things that you would get to discover and at no cost to you unless you're spending money on the cool books that you discover. <laughs> Lan. I like Baltimore Comic Con. It feels... I mean, it's arts, comic art centric, and for a guy who likes getting commissions and everything comic based, it's a really good show. It's it's not as hectic, I feel, as Heroes or anything like that, and it it just feels nice and homely. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that in any disrespecting way. It just feels nice, and it's easy to navigate. It's at the Baltimore Convention Center, uh, which is sadly because it's the same weekend as Dragon Con this year, and since I don't get to see my friends and family. I'm going to Dragon this year instead. Uh, I know, but it's a really good show, and anyone in the area who hasn't been or wants to check it out, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's run by by great people, and I highly recommend it. um, Yeah, I mean, C2E2 is a lot of fun. Um, You didn't go this year. I didn't. I'm not doing any shows in the U.S. this year, Um, mostly just um, my Canada based things, but I mean, it, it's so good. I love Chicago so much. I love like everything about that city, except for the crime, right? <laughs> I don't know what was that. I don't know what that was. I mean, you could say the same thing about Baltimore. Anyways. You could definitely say the same thing about Baltimore. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Um, one more, Lan. I feel like, um, I don't know. We've covered most of the shows I go to. I, I feel like anything outside of that is New York, but I, I feel like New York is, it's it's getting to the point where it's getting too big, but I still feel like... It's more, it's goes. like for us, it's like, I feel like more of a show that, it's like a hotel show. Like, you, we don't get a lot out of it, Um, yeah. the show itself, but we get <laughs> to see our friends. That's That's mainly why I go, because a lot of my West Coast friends don't do East Coast shows, but they do New York. Um, I'll, I'll do one hoity-toity one uh, because I've gone to a couple overseas. Um, okay, I'm, I'm mentioning two. Um, Angulim is this fantastic yes. show if you it can rings. ever go. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's like Chicaf meets San Diego. So it has actually more people in attendance than San Diego. Um, but it still has this amazing European small press feel to it. There's a lot of big press publishers like Urban Comics who do a lot of the DC stuff um, in Europe, but it has a lot of the books that you wouldn't see at most other shows, um, like TCAF. Um, It's really amazing. It has a good balance of creators pretty much from all over the world. Uh, And there's a really strong um, Japanese presence there as well for those of you who really like manga and that sort of thing. Um, So that one's really cool. And the other one that I've uh, really, really loved was in Malta. Um, I I got to go to a convention that took place in a medieval like fort. No, I don't think it was medieval. Medieval may not be the right term, but it was this old fort where they filmed Game of Thrones and stuff. And I was just like, "This, this is cool. This is very cool. I this this is this is okay. This is fine. I'm fine here. Um, it's really beautiful. It takes place in uh the city of Valletta, 
And again, very small press, um, very intimate, but you still have like a lot of cosplayers that come and there's, uh, a lot of, they, they try and do a mix of North American press or not press creators and European creators. So there's a nice balance. I want to say thought bubble, but I've never been. So that just gets honorary mentions from me. Cause it's like my most wanted to go to show. Yeah. 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 Highest on my list right now. Um, why? I'm just curious. I just, it just seems like it's my cup of tea. I was about to say cup of cake. <laughs> like that's gross. <laughs> why would I have a cup of cake? Um, cup of cake sounds pretty great though. It's, that's kind of true, but I, I, my throat's kind of sore, so I kind of want tea. So I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it for our podcast on comic cons and how to get, uh, prepared, how to kind of just have a good knowledge of what to expect. Um, if you like these shows, please make sure you're tuning in uh, by subscribing to you know us on FeedBurner, iTunes, Android, Google Play. We're on all of the things. All of the we're, things. We're everywhere. We are. Um, and share our shows with other people. Tell us things that you want us to cover for these special editions. And we will do our best to um, give you an informative show that hopefully helps you out. Uh, so I've been Steph. Is This has been Lan. Yes. This has been me. <laughs> if you want to check us out, um, we technically have a comics bound Twitter. We haven't been using it, but you can get in touch with us collectively uh at Rogue's Portal, um, mm-hmm. or me individually at Hello Cookie Lan, and I'm at Pitsed Off. That's P I T T S E D underscore off. And and that's gonna do it. So until next time, keep weird. <laughs>